Hello and welcome to Reality TV Cringe. I'm one of your hosts, Delia, here with my real tight homegirl and my daughter-in-law, Beatrice. Hello, everybody. We are so excited to be here with you so today. Excited. We're going to be talking about Mormons. Mm -hmm. We're going to be talking about Mormonism. Uh -huh. We're going to be talking about some Joseph Smith honey. Yeah. And I'm excited about it. Me too. Now, before we get into it, we do have to warn you, please hide your wife and hide your kids. This is a politically incorrect podcast. We say bad words. We have stupid opinions and we're not about to apologize for them Ew, no. so if you're sensitive you might want to find yourself another dumpster baby <laughs> but if you're down to party and talk about some mormons welcome to this dumpster and if you are down to party be sure to follow us on instagram at reality tv cringe and join us on patreon patreon.com slash reality tv cringe that's where the real party's at we're reacting to milf manor over there and it's lit oh my god yes it is and couples therapy and couples therapy and, and we so much more also reacted to the sister wives trailer for yes, season 19 it's up right now if you want to go check it yeah. out now if you are watching on youtube please if you would be so kind like comment share and subscribe because everything you do helps us to grow on youtube and we really need to we really do we're being criminally robbed on youtube and <laughs> shadow so bands. help us to get to four thousand, please please and thanks. thank you in advance appreciate it okay let's just dive right into this sister wives okay RV caravan to Nauvoo, Girl, Illinois. This shit. Honey, they took a trip. And you know if it's a brown trip? Ugh. A brown road trip? A horrible mess. It's going to be a catastrophe. Every fucking time. <laughs> it's funny. So <laughs> it's Logan's birthday. They announced that they're going to take a trip to Nauvoo, Illinois, which is like the Mormon Mecca or something. Okay. I guess. That's where like Mormonism started. No, actually it was in Missouri, but they had to flee Missouri and they fled from Who Missouri cares? to <laughs> Illinois to a town called Commerce, which then they renamed to Nauvoo. And I'm wondering why. I'm wondering, is that a Mormon word? Mm. Was like Joseph Smith given that name from a white salamander talking mm in an angelic language i want to know more i don't know seems like a strange name it's kind of weird and once they got to nauvoo then mormonism started to take shape for real i think yeah and i asked my former mormon friend ethel about this and Hi, she ethel. said nauvoo was like the last place where mormonism was like all one church and then that's kind of where it started to break off into the different sex like lds and the fundamentalists and all that stuff okay so that's why it's like super important she also said that apparently mormons believe i don't know if it's like fundamentalists or lds or both they all believe that the garden of eden was around missouri and Illinois. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah i think they also believe that jesus visited the americas and so, like yeah. walked among dinosaurs and or pachyderms and stuff. Sorry, Ethel, if that's wrong. I can't If that's remember. wrong, I am very sorry. But I think they believe <sighs> think Jesus so. came to America. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and that's why we're a blessed country. Yes. Because Jesus blessed us personally. He did. He traveled to see. He walked on water all the way. All the way to Missouri, honey. <laughs> to Missouri. Came in through Florida. Made his yeah. way up to Missouri. Yes, exactly. So anyway, they're planning a trip to Nauvoo, Illinois. Uh -huh. And Logan and Hunter are like, fuck that noise. No. I'm staying home, which that's the smartest idea. Totally. I totally would have done that. Maddie is so jealous. Maddie's like, I wish I could fucking stay home. Yes. McKelty, uh. as she's being told that the family's taking a road trip to Illinois, she makes a gesture yeah. and she's like get me out of here get Please. me out of this family i'm sick of this bullshit <laughs> and again it's so performative like this entire season has been about the cul-de-sac yeah my sister wife's closet which by the way very interested in those two things oh me too but also <laughs> like putting polygamy on the main stage mm -hmm. and talking about their values with that which i couldn't care less personally i mean 
Yeah. About their polygamy. I mean, I, I'm interested in religion. Yeah. I'm interested to learn a little bit more. And we do in this episode. But I'm like, stop showcasing your bullshit fucking marriages. I know. That are going to fail anyway. Oh, totally. It's all a far. F- and this whole episode, you can see it on Cody's face. He fucking hates Christine. <laughs> I hate He's Christine. So Why is she always yelling? I don't know. But she's always like 17 to 25 decibels higher than everybody else. It's the Aries. God, I'm like, calm down. It's the Aries. You don't need to be so loud. Like, we're right here on the couch like, with chill you. Chill out. We don't yeah. need to shout. McKelty. I'm McKelty 100%. Energy. That's where she gets it from. But they embark on their pilgrimage to Nauvoo in two RVs and a car, right? Or is it just two RVs? It's two RVs. And their plan is to make it to Illinois in three days and so which is quite a feat yeah mary's been the one to organize the trip and like where they're going to be and of course they don't make it no they don't to any of the places on time no on day one (laughs) it took them 16 hours to do an eight hour day yeah which i'm like that is absolutely ridiculous like I that makes me so mad. I'm such a planner. I'm like, we leave on schedule. We're gonna get there by this time. Are you a Virgo rising? Yes. That's why. And Virgo Mercury. Okay. Bitch. <laughs> so yeah. yeah. I'm like, I want some semblance of structure. I understand shit happens. Well, there's like nine thousand children who are going to have to go to the bathroom at I various get times. It. And they do talk about it. Like one bathroom stop at some rando gas station it should be 15 minutes for the normal sure. person, but it's one hour with the Browns. And, that's and so fair. imagine having to stop 10 times because you got little Savannah, you got little uh, Gabe, you got Maddie, somebody's on their period, somebody's got a poop. I mean, it's happening all the time. But so that makes your trip eight hours longer? Apparently. Like, I fail to see how it makes it that long. Apparently. I feel like they drive slow. I feel like they wake up super late. And then they try to get there by a certain time and they end up getting there late at night. I don't know. It all, it pissed me off. Okay. Well, you're just going to have us all peeing in bottles <laughs> on our road trip. All your kids and us too. Well, you got RVs. You can pee in the RV. Ew, but how do you empty that? What is It uh, goes into a tank. Ew. That's the point of an RV. Do you smell it? I don't no, want to do that it at goes all. into a tank no. and then you can empty it when you're at a, sh- a stop or whatever. Oh, God. Ew. No. <laughs> well, uh-uh. you could never do that. No, I would never do that. <laughs> but I mean, that's the point of the RVs unless they didn't have bathrooms. But then I'm like, whatever. Well, I think they just wanted to lounge and lay down and sleep in the RV. I they, <sighs> Maybe they had a bathroom, but I don't know. All I do know is that two of the wives didn't want to sleep in the RV. Yeah. <laughs> and two of the wives had to sleep in the RVs. And so, of course, Robin, of course, got to go and sleep at the hotel because she is a baby. Uh, King of course. Solomon needs his own room. And then Christine, yep. who self IDs as a princess. And uh-huh. she's like, absolutely. I want at the hotel. I yeah. want to wash my butt. I want to get in a nice bed. I yeah. don't want to hear all this racket. Mm-hmm. And then Mary's like, whatever. I'll sleep in the RV. I'm fine to sleep in the RV. And then Janelle wants to sleep in the RV. Yeah. Because she likes to camp. She does like that. Which I thought was cute because we see that even in season 18. She's like, I like to be in the RV. That's great. But where's Cody sleeping? With Robin. Mm -hmm. Because on one of the nights, he's like, I didn't know our hotel was 12 miles away. And like, our hotel. Mm -hmm. Because you were just talking about how you had to rotate your wives when you travel so that you can make sure that you're with each one equally. But no, Mm -mm. you're with Robin. Totally. Well, because he has to be because of the baby. What about Truly? She's also a baby. Well, Christine can handle it. Okay. (laughs) That's probably Cody's logic. Like, you've had six kids. You can deal with it. Well, when they're talking about this, he looks at Mary directly and he's like, why don't you have a baby and then you can stay at the hotel? I I was like, wow. That is ridiculous. You said the quiet part out loud. Oh, he says a lot of he does. quiet parts in this episode. That's for sure. But anyway, so day one takes 16 hours. They stop in Grand Junction. Oh, they stopped at Family Pond on the way there in Utah. Oh, I forgot well, about that. That's interesting to yeah. me, though, because isn't that where McKelty goes when she graduates and St. she works George. at a pawn shop in St. George. It must be this place. Maybe. And the guy who owns the pawn shop also owns the Hiram Smith house in Nauvoo. Yeah. And so while they're at the pawn shop, they're talking about Mormonism again. And we got a portrait of Brigham Young. Yes. We get to hear about how 
Cody looks like Brigham Young. and But Christine thinks Brigham Young's ugly AF. And Robin thinks Brigham Young's handsome. Of course. It was cringe. And Robin only said that on purpose because Cody was offended that Christine thinks Brigham Young is ugly. <laughs> <laughs> but that he also looks like Brigham Young. Very bizarre. Yes. I didn't see the resemblance at all. No. I mean, no. I mean, they're both ugly. <laughs> yeah. Yes. <laughs> they're both ugly. And so then after the pawn shop, then they arrive at their hotels or whatever, and they have a family meeting. And Cody's like, we have to leave earlier in the day. I can't fucking do this. This is late at night. What are we doing? Christine didn't even want to do the meeting anyway. Well, yeah. I mean, it's 11 p.m. Yeah. She wants to go to her, hot- her hotel. She wants to clean her butt. Yeah. And she wants to lay in bed and watch TV and have a cocktail, I would assume. Based. And he just wants to yell at everybody because they're... 10 hours late to their destination. And I'm like, it's partly your fault too, dude. Of course it's partly his fault. And Mary's like, well, I think we need to leave a little earlier tomorrow since obviously it's taking us so long. And Christine's like, all I'm hearing is womp, 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 schedule, schedule, (laughs) schedule. I want to go to bed. (laughs) Say, Like, shut the fuck up. Mary's trying though to get everybody there in a timely manner, but nobody gives a shit. No, nobody cares at all because they have all these fucking kids. Mm -hmm. And how are you going to get them all together when the adults can't even get themselves together? Imagine how the RV smells with all those kid butts just, you know, farting. Ugh. doing all those kid things with the stale socks oh and stuff God, driving can't. for four days 18 hour days in an rv that sounds like hell to me it sounds horrible my husband wants to buy an rv he thinks that sounds so fantastic to just travel the country in an yeah. rv no thank you some rvs are tricked out man i don't well, that's great and all <laughs> but i have absolutely no desire to do any some of that have full-size showers okay, and full-size no. toilets i mean where's the water coming from well, yeah. No. <laughs> but if you plug it into an RV park, you plug it into the water I don't want there. It. I don't want it. I'm never going to do it. Princess. I will fly there. First class, bitch. Yeah. And I will meet you at our destination. You're the real princess yes, over I here. Yes, I am. Girl. I'm no part of an RV. No. No. You don't even want to camp. No. <laughs> no. Absolutely not. And then day two, they leave late. Shocker. And the old kids are tired. They're fucking over it, as am I. They arrive late into Kansas. And then Cody is talking about how it's difficult traveling with this big-ass family. He only had four hours of sleep the night before. He's probably going to only have four hours of sleep tonight. And poor Cody, he needs his beauty sleep. He does. He's got to put up his, got to roll up his hair. Uh He's got to put on his bonnet he's got to get pegged. sleep and he's got to get a full eight hours i don't know about getting pegged now <laughs> he's got needs a full eight hours of sleep and so he's bugging yeah oh he's grumpy mm-hmm. he is so grumpy he talks about how it's hard to have to rotate between all the wives and then robin's like oh i hate that word rotate i hate that because i want you all the time and i never want you to have to rotate these tires mm-hmm. but like is there no prognosticator in this family is there nobody that could just like Put their finger to the wind and just see that it's going to be a hellish trip across the country <laughs> to Illinois of all places during the summer. I know. Can't you figure this out? This is going to be terrible. But you're going to haul all your kids across this country and you're going to have a stink attitude. I mean, Cody, the least you could do since you're the one who wanted all of these kids to do this is be in a good mood. I mean, for Or really? try to have like good vibes. Mm-mm. But you can't do that. He can't. Because he's, he's tired. tired. Asshole. Okay. I know. Like, so you're the only one that's allowed to have an attitude, but then you get annoyed with Christine being a princess or being upset that you're holding a family meeting at 11 p.m. at night? Just get realistic. Be like, okay, it's going to take us five days. We're going to drive no matter what. We're going to drive seven hours, eight hours, and we're stopping. And then we're going to have a full night's sleep. We're going to have a nice dinner and like, just make it easy. Right. Like when my husband and I go from North Texas up to Des Moines, Iowa to Mm -hmm. visit my brother, which we do every single year. What is that? A 10 hour? drive well we stop oh yeah we stop in just outside of topeka or somewhere i don't know somewhere we, in the middle somewhere, of nowhere somewhere in kansas we um get a nice hotel yeah we go out for a nice dinner we sleep in and then we make our way another four five six hours it's much more Super enjoyable easy that way. no stress yeah like when my family moved us down from washington state ah. all the way to texas like those people from my 600 pound life Literally. they gotta make that drive i've made that drive. oh my god lacey buckingham yes. came from washington she got i know kicked out of her vehicle by her <laughs> sister-in-law on the side of the yeah. road in texas we took like a whole 
week yeah to drive down and we made stops like we went and saw our family in oregon we saw my uncle in sacramento we went to sedona and then we drove right through new mexico because it's ugly as yeah. shit well stopped in west house. texas and then you know came in it was fine mm-hmm. it sucked driving that long it's a long fucking drive but like take the time so that you're not like go 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 for real and then pissed off because you don't make it on time i mean the browns should know better as a family i know because by day three they're a day behind. Oh, Cody's so bent out of shape, buddy. <laughs> he is. And I think Robin is too. Mm-hmm. I think Robin's probably in his ear like, this is bullshit. Why are we taking this long to drive to Illinois? Like, it shouldn't be this bad. And so now it's making him even more angry. They're day behind. There's like a windstorm, which looked horrible. Like, it's like blowing the awnings up on their RVs. And they're like swerving in the roads. It looked terrible yeah but mary's base she's like i can drive yeah i got no problem driving i'm I'm not tired i can drive us all the way there all the way back but somehow this isn't enough for cody because (sighs) cody doesn't want her to drive like he wants to put another wife in there he wants different wives to drive and he wants to spend time with different wives i'm like what's your problem i don't know why are you yelling at mary then he storms out of the rv and slams the door and she's like i don't I said I could drive. What's the big problem? Like, seriously. He's obviously tired. She's, like, saying on the couch, dude, just go take a fucking nap. It's Mm -hmm. fine. Like, I'm good. But he's, like, not seeing it in this moment because he's tired and grumpy. He's he's a a man baby. baby. Yeah, he's a pamper boy. But on the... (laughs) On the... (laughs) Get your goo-goo and shut the fuck up. No, for real. But on the couch, he's talking about how he's frustrated because he just wants his wives to obey him. Mm Mm-hmm. Like, that's the root of it. And then Christine shouts and says, obeying is just a four-letter word, and that's offensive. Yeah, and I mean, it's never been that. You've been with some of these women for 20 years. It's not going to ever be that. No. So why are we expecting your wives to fall into line and obey you? They're just not going to. No. They're independent women. Mm -hmm. But okay. Cody wants to be the patriarch. He right. wants to be the leader now. This really is, I think, the origin story of his patriarchal arc. Yep. Like, this is where it's starting to happen. Like, why won't these bitches treat me like Joe Darker's wives treat yep. him? Like, why don't they respect me the same way? And so I think now is the time he's starting to change a little bit more and get resentful of wives like Christine. Yeah. Who are like, absolutely not. Well, I'm sorry, but why don't you be a husband that is worth respecting? I mean, (laughs) period. Really? (laughs) Period. Like, if you're a respectable respectable man, then the women are going to be fawning all over you. Uh Uh-huh. Do whatever you want. Right. But you suck. Well, and Christine even said as much in the Joe Darger episode when she's like, it's clear that his family and his kids respect him. Mm -hmm. Meaning... Cody, your family doesn't. No. And it's because you act like a bitch made baby boy. Yep. <laughs> Sorry, is that rude? I apologize. <laughs> it's the truth. I do not prefer him. It's just the truth. And so then on the way to Illinois on this third day, they're <laughs> late. Mary has some stupid excursion for the family where they stop in, I don't know, Topeka or something. And they go and visit Truckhenge, which is run by a guy who hates the government. <laughs> right he's probably doing meth probably doing meth (laughs) i mean that's great i laughed so hard at this because it was so dumb it was dumb and did his shirt read you say psychotic like it's a bad thing yes (laughs) i'm like what were you guys expecting to like encounter here but he just talks about how the government didn't like all of the trucks that he had on his property. It would totally be my husband. I it know. would to- this would totally if he it. didn't have a woman. This is exactly what my husband I would was do. Thinking of and him. so, as a big uh. f you to the government, he like puts his trucks vertical and cements them into the ground, and he makes truck henge. I mean, that's based. <laughs> Totally what my husband would do. Yeah. And he just talks about giving the middle finger to the government with all these kids around. He's flipping off the camera and then he's got the brown kids flipping off the camera. And I'm like, this is great. It's actually really great. Christine hated it. She hated him. She hated him. Yep. She's like, why are we seeing this man who hates the government? I mean, he's just terrible. And this guy with his no teeth, he's like, I can't imagine having more than one wife (laughs) with his crazy scraggly beard. I loved it, but it was also just like 
dumb. Like, Mary, what were you expecting? Why are we stopping at Truck Hench? But like, Mary's just trying to plan out she like is. a road trip that would be fun for the kids. And and I mean, what is there in Topeka, Kansas? To I don't know. <laughs> Not much, honey. That's probably the only thing she found online when yeah. she was Googling. So whatever. Then they leave. They arrive late. They're still 12 miles away from the hotel that they were going to stay at. And Cody's flipping out, man. Yeah. He had no idea that the hotel would be so far away. And he's going to have to drive there because, of course, he's staying at the hotel with Robin, uh-huh. of course. Of course. But he's like, I'm not going to be able to go to sleep tonight until 1 or 2. He opens the RV door where Mary is sitting. He's like, by the way, we're not leaving until later tomorrow morning because I got to get some sleep. And Mary's like, I don't know why you're sniping at me. Like, chill out. Uh- and he's like, fine. I'm just telling everybody. So he's just a grump. He's hard to be around. He's making this road trip suck suck so hard and you know what i actually have a little uncensored for this okay. all right so now we are back <laughs> from our uncensored and by the way if you want to hear our uncensored conversation all you have to do is go to patreon because yeah. that's where all of these uncensored bits are yeah so back to the browns mm-hmm. um we start day four we are on our way to Nauvoo. Yep. Finally. And yep. it's like there's a river. There's a body of water. I mean, Illinois is just flat as fuck, honey. Oh, God. I lived there for 15 years. Ugh. It's not the most beautiful horrible. or beauteous state in the union yeah. or whatever. No so offense. They're rounding, no offense. So they're rounding this bend. There's some water over here. And then, ah, the Mormon temple. <laughs> Of Nauvoo. I know. And they're like, oh my God, it's like coming home. It's amazing. I felt it in my I have heart. Goosebumps. I felt God in my heart when I saw that temple in the and middle of a cornfield in Illinois. I know. <laughs> and they arrive at Hiram? Hiram, Hiram Smith's Hiram house. Hiram Smith, yeah. Who's the brother of Joseph Smith, aka the Mormon prophet. And they're at his house and Christine's like, oh my God, I'm so excited that we're staying at his house. It feels so amazing that my kids are playing in the same backyard that Hiram's kids played in. Oh my God, I love it. Yeah, I mean, sure. I can imagine if there's a historical figure that I venerate and slash worship, his teachings or whatever, like being in the same place. I mean, I'm sure that's charged with a lot of Mormon energy or whatever. So she's really. into it. All the kids are running around. Yeah. And they are so excited to be in Nauvoo. I'm so just, happy. I just could never be me, honey. I no. could never be. No. Never. No. Absolutely I'll be in not. Chicago at the Four Seasons with the yes, Cosmopolitan honey. talking yes. to people at the bar. Eating some sushi or that's something. That's right. Come and get me on the way back. Girl. Actually, I'll fly because I ain't getting an RV. <laughs> I know. I can just imagine how terrible the drive was on the way back. No. It probably took them five days. At least you're excited to get there right. on the front end. But on the back end, it's just like, Jesus, get me away from... I'm going to kill them all. <laughs> oh, I'm going sure. to mass murder all of these people. 100%. And it won't be my fault. And I'll get off. Yep. Yep. <laughs> exactly. And then they take a tour of Nauvoo with a very lovely tour guide uh joseph johnston who looks like jesus he does look like jesus and he's walking up to the browns and his hair hair. is just glossy and chestnut brown and christine's like oh he looks like jesus (laughs) and everyone's like oh my god he's got nicer hair than you cody Mm -hmm. actually christine's the one that says that yeah And that does not make Cody feel good. And Cody says something like, well, at least he has hair on his forehead, Mm. referring to his own balding, which I guess he's acknowledging. At least he's a little self-aware of that. Yes. That's pretty great. Um, But then they take them, I think the tour guide takes them to a parking lot. (laughs) Like a weird parking lot where they're talking about polygamy. There's a field across from a parking lot. (laughs) I mean, just any old field in Illinois is what that looks like. And yeah, Joseph says something like right there in that field is where Hiram Smith confronted Brigham Young and asked him, what's going on, Brigham? Because I can tell there's things going on I don't know about. And this is the moment Brigham Young reveals to Hiram Young that yeah. Joseph's been lying this whole time uh-huh. and he's got a bunch of wives yeah. and they're practicing polygamy because Joseph got a testimony from the spirit. Uh-huh. And so this is the first that Hiram heard of it. And apparently Hiram and Joseph used to argue about this because Hiram was against it. Yeah. But Joseph wanted all these women for himself. Of course. And then they talk about how many wives joseph smith actually had and like normally this tour guide apparently doesn't go into like 
too much of polygamy. People ask about it and stuff, but because he's actually touring with polygamists, he gives them the full spiel. And he says that Joseph Smith actually had 33. Yep. 33 wives. Which was a surprise to Cody Brown, who uh-huh. thought that it was 17. Yep. And then Joseph reveal, reveals that 12 of those 33 wives were actually married to other men. Yes. So it sounds like some Warren Jeffs bullshit where he just comes into men's houses with their wives and says, that wife's mine now. Yes. You belong to me. Yeah. And Robin seems to have a big problem with this. She's like, wait, wait, wait. You're saying that these women were with other men and Joseph's like they were married to those men in the fullest extent of that term like they were looking oh yeah the husbands and they were also belonging to Joseph Smith and so Robin has some cognitive dissonance because wait a minute that would make them brother husbands yes because Mary asks if they were still like fornicating with their original husbands and Joseph Smith and the tour guide says yes and i was asking ethel about this and cody kind of talks about it there's like historical debate of like what actually was happening with joseph smith's other wives ethel told me that a lot of like the mainstream narrative is that joseph smith thought that these 12 women's husbands were not holy enough and so he wanted to save them because he's such a good guy he wanted to save them from hell but Mormons don't really believe in hell. He wanted to save them and bless them. So that's why he took them from their husbands, stole them, and married them. Doesn't that sound like the girl who was on the polygamist rescue episode a mm-hmm. few back? Like her father just disappeared one night because he told his family he was a bad man. Yeah. And he his whole family now had to belong to Warren Jeffs. Right. But then Warren Jeffs got caught up in all that um, criminality. And so then they had to go with some other man. So it sounds a little bit like he was also told that he was not holy enough. Yeah. Similar story there. Yeah. But I guess the historians kind of debate... Like, what actually happened Well, yeah, because they probably want to cover that up. Yeah. And I think there's the conversation from Cody about, well, you know, maybe he just blessed them, blessed these 12 women and sealed them in their faith. And then Janelle says something that's pretty base. She's like, well, it's just Joseph Smith. He's not God. He's just a guy. You know, it's it's not going to change my faith, which was interesting to me because I I know they call him a prophet. Yeah. But I didn't know whether he was some sort of a deity to them, some sort Mm -hmm. of a small G God. No, I guess I was asking Ethel about this. So in like LDS faith, there's like multiple prophets. So there always has to be a living prophet. Okay. So like Joseph Smith was that one, then he died, and then it was Brigham Young, and then he died, and then so on, so on. So she said that right now in the LDS faith, there's a prophet, I forget his name, I can't remember. There's one that's currently alive, but then there's going to be a next one. Because, like the Buddha? I don't know. I okay. Guess. All right. Yeah. Like they're like men that are like ordained because they have special powers or something. I don't know. Something like they speak to the divine. Oh, and sure. Uh, yeah, I don't know. Yeah. It's a whole fucking thing. It's a right. bunch of fuck shit. Right. But yeah, so there always has to be a living prophet. So there's multiple prophets. Okay. I learned that today. But Joseph Smith was the first one. Yeah. Right? Okay. Allegedly. I don't know. I think so. Yeah. And so then after the Mormon parking lot polygamist talk, then they go and visit Carthage. Well, before that, they go to the place of the Nauvoo Expository. Was it called the Expository? It was the paper. It was the scene of yeah. the unrest. Right, 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 the, right. The initial unrest that ultimately got Joseph Smith charged. And apparently the newspaper in Nauvoo posted or um, made an article, wrote an article about how Joseph Smith was a polygamist, but also a polytheist. So yeah. it wasn't just polygamy. It was also the fact that Joseph Smith preached that men could become gods Mm -hmm. which was very radical especially in christendom and also was teaching that you could baptize the dead into the faith yeah so even if you died you never were a mormon you died a christian you died an atheist these mormon people could come in and they could baptize you into mormonism and now you got your own planet Yep, that's still a thing, by the way. It is still a thing. Mm -hmm. And so that all began in Nauvoo. And I think this newspaper printed an article about that. And so Joseph Smith, the city council, and all of these polygamous people got pissed off because they wrote that article and they destroyed the newspaper. Yeah, they burned it down. They burned it down. Yeah. Mary's ancestor was standing across the road watching (sighs) it burn down. I'm like, why do we need to say that? 
<laughs> Why is that important? I don't know. I mean, that's like not a good thing to be proud of. Like your ancestors just sitting there watching it. Yeah. Not doing anything. Not doing anything. Okay. And so then Joseph Smith is charged for what, hap- what happened to the newspaper right. and also causing this unrest. That's when he goes to Carthage. He appears in court. Yep. He posts his bail. On the way out, the state approaches and charges him with treason. Yep. And then imprisons him. Imprisons him in the in the jail in Carthage. Yep. Him and Hiram. Yes. And then Robin's ancestor, John Solomon Ful- Fulmer. Fulmer. So this is what King Solomon is named after. Baby King Solomon. We learned something today. Yes. yes. So he's a lawyer and he is trying to help get Joseph and Hiram, I think, out of jail. And then there's a mob, like an angry mom of Mormons, who bust into the jail they kill Hiram and then Joseph. Looks like Joseph's trying to get out of a window, although yeah. the way a Mormon will tell you is he opens the window and declares his love for God and then he's immediately shot, falls from the window. Yep. The crowd drags him by his scalp, honey, <laughs> drags him by his hair to a well and then yeah. one of the dudes with a bayonet spears him through and murders Joseph Smith. It's a terrible way to go. It terrible. sounds awful. Um, and I think it was... Was it Mormons who did this? Mormons who weren't polygamists? Yeah, I think so. I'm not clear it wasn't on the clear. mob. Yeah. Or whether it's like a totally different situation. I don't, I'm not sure. But he was martyred for the cause. He was. But then Brigham Young was the Mormon Moses. And he brought all of his polygamist friends out to Utah. And that's where they brought. Right. They moved from Nauvoo to Salt Lake City. Exactly. Basin or whatever. I guess. And that's how that happened. Yes. And that was interesting, actually, for me to learn about. Because as a fundamentalist Christian, as an evangelical, and as someone who was a missionary who was constantly competing, by the way, with Mormons. Oh, God. In, like, Tonga and Fiji. The Mormons are all over those islands. And so it was like a race to get to the person to save them to your faith. (laughs) And so we had to learn a lot about Mormonism. Mm. And so I heard stories about Joseph Smith and what he his dispensation from God what he taught his character but like a lot of that is tainted and filtered through the biased lens of a fundamentalist or an evangelical so it's interesting to me long story long yeah to hear these explanations of their mythology oh for sure I thought it was pretty interesting and like how Cody's talking about how he really believes Joseph Smith's testimony that's why he's living out polygamy but I'm like, okay. okay. Oh, we forgot to talk about Twain Town. We did. Too. I was just we thinking totally about Twain Town. We totally skipped through that. We can go back to that. But we don't have to like edit anything no, differently. Yeah. Like, we can just go back to Twain Town. But to your point with Cody talking a lot, like he a mentions lot. this a lot, like how Joseph Smith's testimony and Joseph Smith's life has inspired him into plural marriage. And he really believes this as an article of his faith. Like he seems really passionate about it like in these moments he seems like he really believes this and I again I'm just wondering what changed so radically that in just 10 years time you're living a life that's completely counterintuitive to what you said you believed and the way you're treating your children and your wives these different plural marriages like is objectively despicable yeah so like what happened I don't know. Like when he was talking about all of this and how he's just so moved by Joseph Smith's testimony, I just kind of got the feeling that he was just regurgitating bullshit that his father told him Mm. because his father converted to polygamy late in life because he wanted to bang Janelle's mom. And that was the whole reason. So he's telling his son this. Cody says his mom believed in polygamy too. Like, I don't know. It just felt very regurgitated to me. And like, he wasn't actually like believing it, but who knows? I mean, he says it at the end. He's like, you know, when I'm dealing with my nagging, cranky, ugly wives, essentially, <laughs> is what he's saying. That's the mm-hmm. subtext here. Mm-hmm. It's like, when I'm dealing with this, I just have to remember this beautiful story of where we came from and why I believe this testimony so much. So I mean, that's his mm-hmm. justification. But I'm like, you're not happy, though. No, look he's, at your he's definitely face. not happy. But a lot of people who are in religion aren't really happy with their situation, exactly. but they're doing it for their faith. Right. Or they think they're doing it for their faith until such time as they just can't do it anymore. Yeah. And then they leave it and or they destroy it, which is what Cody Brown has done. Exactly. 
So let's go back to Twain Town. Twain Town, I think, was in Kansas. It was on day four. It was day four. I don't know where it was. Mark. I think it was in Twain Town. Missouri. So they go and check out where Mark Twain lived or I something. Yes. And they take a tour and it's it is whatever, yeah. but they do have a tour guide that shares a bit of Mark Twain's writing about traveling through Salt Lake City. Yeah, this is pretty <laughs> great because he was talking about, I think Mark Twain was like, I don't know how anybody could live polygamy or something. And then he sees these ugly ass, nasty ass polygamous women. And he's like, oh, it could not be me. Essentially is what Mark Twain <laughs> Much more saying. eloquent than that. But Mark Twain essentially says, I went to Utah, honey, yeah. <laughs> and all those women were ungainly, unattractive and not beautiful and so any man who marries a mormon woman is doing a christian service yeah. any man who marries multiple mormon women are doing a christ is doing a christian service for the rest of the world because those women are not attractive <laughs> <laughs> and all of the wives and cody are laughing at this and cody on the couch is making light of it but christine's kind of offended she's butthurt because she's like we're not ugly and then cody has to say very forced like no, my wives are beautiful. But he's totally laughing about it because he doesn't think three of those four wives I know, are beautiful. he does not. He thinks one of those wives is pretty, but yep. the rest of those wives, not so much. Not so much. He also says he's seen a lot of not attractive polygamous women. And then Christine, all in her feelings, is like, well, I've seen a lot of ugly polygamists. Uh-huh. Very defensive because she's already not being banged by cody she's already fallen out of favor he doesn't mm -hmm. like to spend time at her house and she knows he finds her to be very unattractive so that hits close to home for her well and i know he said all of this like in season 18 where he's like i was never attracted to christine i thought she was ugly and fat and gross but i'm like i'm wondering if he's saying that in these earlier seasons to her behind closed doors like mm, i don't know your body's not the same after true I'm not into it i'm sorry like, I wonder if he says that shit. And maybe, she's just maybe, hiding it. Maybe. Yeah, I wouldn't put it past him. He I seems to be a cruel person. Well, of course. And when you've got Robin's breakdancing pussy, I how mean, can how compare? can you compare? You can't. <laughs> no. no. And Diesel jeans. <gasps> oh, my God. I saw a Reddit post today. It was, like, from an earlier season, like, probably after season five. And it's Cody just talking about how beautiful Robin is. And it's this angle of her where you can see her jaw. And all the people on Reddit were being so mean. Like posting like witch faces. No. <laughs> yeah. Because everyone's like, really? You think Robin's beautiful? Well, I mean, maybe he felt like compared to his other wives who he was not attracted to. Like she was a step up, maybe. I mean, I, I don't see it. I don't see it either, but like to each their own. I'm not going to sure. sit here and try to body shame Oh, her. yeah, because we're better than that. <laughs> we're better than that, Beatrice. <laughs> we don't body shame here. Far be it from us. Yeah. Was that the end of the episode? Pretty much, yeah. He, Cody talking about Joseph Smith sacrificing himself yeah. for his testimony. Okay. And Cody's like, we could be killed for that. Oh, and the... <laughs> <laughs> okay cody <laughs> and the museum that they wanted to go see the yeah. mormon museum they said that they wouldn't allow cody and his family in because they're polygamists mm -hmm. and i asked ethel about that she said it's probably actually because they don't want cameras in there. i was thinking it was because they didn't want the publicity because it's sacred but i mean we need to be martyrs right. we need to be these polygamists who are just trying to show folks that we have a happy loving family and we're being persecuted for Where it we're being judged. because that's part of their family identity exactly which is just bullshit 100 percent. and then we have the preview for the next episode the last episode of the season and this is where it starts to get good i think okay because cody is balding he contemplates shaving his head which i don't think he does i don't think he does too i don't ever remember like photographs of him with a shaved head but he's like sitting there with his hair wet he's getting ready to get it shaved oh i wish he'd do it oh god he looks so much better not really <laughs> um and then we have logan leaving for college um and the family's discussing how important it is to have the cul-de-sac ready to go so the kids have roots and a home to come home to but we know that doesn't last nope and then we have cody upset with mary because she is overspending on her house. Yep. 
and I want to see it because she cries about it. Yeah, so they're sitting down in the room with Mona, oh and it's God. Cody and Mary and Mona and somebody else, and Cody comes in with an attitude. He's already pissed off, and she's like, what's your funky attitude about? And he's just like, I know you're going to be over budget. I know you're overspending, and this is a problem. And Mary starts to cry. <laughs> My walls are going <laughs> up. Uh, Mona, can you just meet with the other women first, and I'll go last? I have to collect myself. Yeah, how about it's because you're overspending and i suspect you're taking from the family pot mm -hmm. to finance your dumbass ugly ass wet bar and your french doors and your french doors and your hobby room and your fifth bedroom bitch. bitch wow i can't wait me neither that better be like the bulk of next the focus episode. i don't care about logan i love him very much i don't yeah, care about great. logan i don't care and i don't really care about whatever the second thing was because <laughs> i've already <laughs> forgotten what it is code uh cody's hair oh i, I kind of yeah. care about i kind of well, care but about he's him. not gonna cut it so i don't really care i just want to see how much he's balding in these earlier seasons yeah. because i want to compare it with mm -hmm. what we see now <laughs> yeah just like these patches of bald <laughs> Head. The receding hairline. Acreage of bald. I love, I it. love it. Show me more. Please. Oh, with some commentary from a stylist. Yes. That would be great. Yes. Well, this was fun, my dear. Yeah, it was quite interesting. Is there anything else that we need to say to these beautiful raccoons before we go, Beatrice? Well, if you love our podcast, you better wow be going to your favorite podcast platform Aggressive. and leave us a glowing five star review say something <laughs> nice please it really helps us grow the pod thank you so much we will be back later this week to continue our conversation about welcome to plathville and yeah. also unexpected which has got to be over soon oh, please. please jesus let it be over <laughs> soon so make sure to come back for that and until then please do not forget that we have nothing but love for you and peace out bye, bye guys